Hello and welcome back to the English Kiwi channel. If this is your first time here or if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like and a comment down below. It really does help out the channel and helps, you know, play the YouTube algorithm and get it up there and viewed by more people. So that's enough of me shilling myself out. Let's talk about what we're doing today. And I guess that's reviving an old style of video I used to do, but also turning it into something new. So this is effectively Brew and Pew. But it's not. I, I know I've already played the, the Brew and Pew intro. This is going to be a new segment which I'm going to call Kiwi's Corner because I am English Kiwi and this is the corner of my studio. I guess it's going to be a bit more of an informal setting and an informal chat where I just talk through different things. So today we're going to be looking at a project I'm working on but we can also talk about kit, talk about you know general thoughts and opinions on things. Uh, and show off some of my other interesting replica firearms that I have. Uh, a couple of things to note though, um, the reason I've got the weird kind of Hitler hair sweep going on is I had my second Covid jab yesterday, no, day before yesterday, and I have broken out in a massive spot from it. So I'm just going to try and cover that up so you don't have to uh, be shocked into horror by it. There we go. So apologies for that, normally I'm puffy all over the place but that is being controlled at the moment but let's dive on to this my UK SF inspired G3 build so why do I have this well I kind of like the look of it and um, and it this looks very similar to a photo I saw a couple of months ago I believe it was on the reptile house blog uh, of uh, UK SF in Afghanistan rocking a tricked out G3. Now it's not exact, the, the one in the photo which I'll probably put up now, uh, the barrel is uh, ends at the gas block so the flash rod is right there, uh, the upper pick rail here that the, the little claw mount was actually a longer extended one goes up in front of the ejection port and there's a D-ball on top of it as well as the ACOG and also I believe it had a surefire flashlight up at the front just in front of the bipod. But this, as it is, is uh, pretty close for government work, really. Um, also, shout out to Georgie Boy Airsoft. Uh, he has a version of this, um, which he was rocking at Tuddenham a couple of weeks ago when I met up with him. Uh, and that kind of got it in the back of my mind that, oh yeah, I do actually need a UK SFG3. Um, but I wasn't planning on doing it so soon. However, I went to the Midlands Airsoft there, and that was sitting there... Um, in the package that you saw at the start of the video, minus the ACOG. So uh, it was the rifle with the real steel rail and real steel flash hider, the suppressor, five mags, and a battery. Oh, and the hard case uh, were listed at 275. Now, I didn't want to spend that much, so I chilled and went, if it goes, it goes. Um, looked around some more, got towards the end of the day, and the price had been dropped to, uh, I think, 180 actually. And I was cheeky and said, could you do 150? And he said, no, but I can do 160, so we shook on that. So I bought the whole package for 160 quid. I didn't know if it worked, um, I didn't bother asking, because to be honest, if it was an entire crap show inside and I had to ditch the riff, I could still probably get my money back from the rail, the flash either, and the five mags that came with it. Um, although I was quietly hopeful that, that it had some work done inside because the battery, the 11 one volt battery that came with it was rigged for mini deans. So, the fact that it was an 11 one and was rigged to a weird connector that not many people use made me think someone had just done some work to it to actually run on 11 one Boy was I wrong though. <laughs> so uh, next weekend I took it up to site to test it. Uh, went to our chrono range, uh, put two eights in it, and it took a second and a half to throw them about 30 meters. Which, uh, if you do your calculation, it's pretty bloody slow. And um, I would put up a video of, of it happening and uh, and then chronoing results of, of it. Unfortunately, I handed it to a mate of mine um, and he had a go and confirmed my hypothesis that it was low FPS. He then went, oh, what does full auto do? Flicks it to full auto, fired a burst, that was also low FPS, um, and then went to fire another burst and instead of it going bang, 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 it went crunch. Um, he turned to me, looked shocked and was very apologetic about the whole thing. I didn't really care because it meant I could open it up, tear it down and get to work. So brought it back, opened it up on the bench, 
and uh, kind of to, to my my horror, I found that it was entirely stock inside. It was still the bright yellow classic army uh, pistons. That reminds me, this this is a classic army uh, G3. Um, so it is alley cast upper and lower receiver, um, which is nice, not plastic. It feels fairly solid, but not too heavy. So it's certainly lighter than I believe the LCT uh, stamp steel ones, which overall makes it look good, feel pretty good. Um, and still makes it skirmishable for those who aren't stacked like an SAS operator. Myself included in that, obviously. Um, so yeah, opened it up and found it was pretty much entirely stock class Army internals. Um, and uh, then I decided that most of that should go and be replaced. So I jumped online, jumped on over to AK2M4. Highly recommend AK2M4 if you're looking for spares or upgrades. Um, ordered a bunch of parts and then jumped on over to Bullseye Country Sport to order the bits that AK2 and 4 didn't have. Both those highly recommend. Also, good thing with AK2 and 4 is they test all of their parts. They properly torture test them to make sure that the stuff they're selling is decent parts. And they have a YouTube channel I recommend subscribing to called Gear Parts and that's where they show what they're doing with all these things. Um, also other places I use for spares, uh, fire support, uh, Super 5s and Airsoft Zone. Although there are others, do have a look around, just Google what you need, find who has it in stock and see who's got it at the best price. That's how I tend to do it. So, I got all the parts in and uh, I'll put a full build list in the description below and links to where you can buy all the parts from. Um, I won't go too into depth, otherwise we'll be here all day, but effectively pretty much all of the internals have been replaced bar the hop-up chamber, the hop-up nub, the gearbox, uh, the tappet plate and tappet spring, the gears and the anti-reversal latch. Previously I forgot to mention the bushings in it also aren't the stock ones, they were decent enough, I kept them in there. Things that didn't need to be replaced but were, the trigger contacts were still surprisingly fine and the selector plate would have still remained in there if I hadn't broken it like a muggins while doing the Perrin V2 install. So yeah, the trigger contacts I've replaced with a pair and V2 hybrid. Um, I wanted to put an ETU into this so there wasn't a MOSFET taking up space elsewhere. Uh, and that had just come out, fairly reasonably priced. And I like the idea of a single board using a magnetic sensor on the trigger. So I jumped in and ordered one of those. And so far I've been very happy with it. I'll talk about that a bit more in a, in a different video. Um, because I feel like the pair and V2 deserves its own, own video discussing all of its many features and uh, interesting quirks. Um, so, with pretty much all of that replaced, I uh, I took it out for a, a skirmish. Um, I put an M95 spring in it, and uh, yeah, it, <laughs> it didn't go that well. I found it had massive um, mid-cap syndrome pro problems. So, the five mags I got with it are all mid-caps, if you can call them that. They're 68 rounders, so really you're at your low end of a mid-cap or your high end of a low cap. Um, but they would only really be between 14 and 35 rounds. Which is fine and dandy unless you're in the middle of a massive firefight and you need to put down a lot of fire. Um, which I found myself doing quite a bit. And then you run through your five mags of 35 to 40 rounds very, very quickly. Also, on top of the mid-cap syndrome, when they were feeding fine in uh, semi-auto, flicking into full auto, there were huge problems. They were all very low FPS and just dropping off straight away. So I knew there was still an issue. So I brought it back to the bench, opened it up, um, and found that the nozzle, the new nozzle I put on, was sticking effectively on the, the cylinder head. Um, and uh, on further inspection, the, the O-ring was fairly hard and was gripping it far too hard. And basically, the tap plate spring couldn't pull it forwards fast enough in set in full auto. And uh, when the mag was fully wound, the spring tension was stronger than the spring um, force from the, the tap plate. So it wasn't going all the way forwards, wasn't loading properly. Um, I pulled it all apart, re-greased all the parts, and basically sat there and tossed off the uh, nozzle on the cylinder head until it all slid pretty well, nice and neatly, put it all back together, found that the, the nozzle was a lot better springy forwards um, and it was all good to go. At that point I switched out the M95 to an M110 
chronoed it and found it to be a bit hot. So I then switched it down to an M100, took it out for a game day at Bravo, um, and found it to be about 0.85 joules. Um, I have some footage from the game at Bravo of me actually hitting players with it. Now, in this footage, it looks like it's hopping high and left, and that's because it is. This was the first game day. I got there quite late, didn't get a chance to properly test it on the range, and so it was over hopping slightly. The second game, I turned the hop down and it performed a lot better. Um, but Mug and Tear forgot to bring the charges for the camera, so I only filmed the first bloody game. Um, however, uh, since then, I've taken this apart again and put in an M105, so it's now performing about 0.95 joules on 0.28 gram BBs, and I ran out to Tuddenham today and did a quick range test, which I can show you here. But basically, the summary of it is with 0 .9, uh, 0 0.95 joules, you can happily reach out and hit 40 meters consistently, once you get your eye in, you can fairly consistently hit a kind of torso size target at 50-ish metres, and you can harass out to about 65 metres, which is pretty good. Admittedly, this platform, being a 7.62 rifle, would be great for turning into a DMR, but I personally don't find the uh, DMR rules at Tuddenham the best, or at, at, at Gunman sites the best. It's 400 FPS, 30 metre minimum engagement, one in the air. Um, and uh, to be honest, 400 versus 350, you're only going to be gaining one or two meters of effective range. So personally, I would build uh, build a DMR style rifle to be running as close to 350 as possible. So you could still use it at CQB. You can still use it at full auto if you need to, but you can really reach out and uh, and uh, effectively counter sniper quite a lot of people. So I think I will take that M110 again. Try it uh, properly, go set the hop properly, see what FPS it's doing, and if it's still hot, then cut a coil down and, and drop the FPS a bit and try and get it in that kind of 330 to 340 range, because at the moment it's sitting about 320, 315 on a 0.2 gram. It's not bad, and as I said, it can reach out to 50 and harass to 65, so it, it's a good gun, um, but it can be better. I also found that the hop grouping is a bit um, spread still, that could just still be the hot bedding in a bit. Um, also, I'm, I'm finding that the adjustment's pretty much all the way off and I'm lifting two eights. So what I'm gonna do at some point is flat hop the rubber and put in a flat hop nub. Um, I'm gonna 3D print one like I have done in the SLR and hopefully that will give me a bit more fine control and bring that grouping in a bit. But overall, for the money I've spent, which I believe has come to about 310 pounds, um, I'm very happy with it. Bearing in mind, this is a UKSF looking G3, you know, it's close enough for government work, you know, your 10 foot rule. Um, it comes with the real steel rail, the real steel flash hider, and this funky thread onable suppressor that you can thread all the way down. I'm not going to do it because it takes a little while, but thread all the way down so it basically sits on the gas block. It looks really, really cool. Um, also, my favourite thing about it is. Yes, you can HK slap it. Um, I still do find some bits annoying about it. So the hop up, until I modded it with some Tipex, has no way of showing you which way is more hop and which way is less hop. So I've put a series of dots on each of the ridges so I can now tell, oh, well that's got three and that one's got four, so that's going up in, uh, in hop as I rotate it that way, and that's going down in hop as I rotate it that way. Without that, it's really annoying because you can never remember and then you end up saying it the wrong way and wasting BBs. HK Slap is nice. The other annoying thing is the paint job on this is, well, I'm pretty sure what they did was just get a rattle can and spray it. Uh, as you can see here on the selector, oh, it looks quite nice like that, but as soon as I move the selector down, oh, that, that's where they sprayed it with the selector uh, in that position. Uh, interesting. Also, annoyingly, the BB, there's a little metal ball bearing that sits in the selector uh, on a spring and is used to click the selector into each of the positions. That has gone away, so this selector is fairly loose. It's so loose, in fact, that when you're firing in semi, it will eventually drop down and start firing in full auto. Um, I've set up the Perrin in this so that when it drops into full auto, if you're tapping at the trigger, it still stays in semi, if you hold the trigger down it then does a three round burst. 
so it's not the end of the world but it is rather annoying so I'm probably going to have to 3D print a replacement for that. The other annoying thing is I can't for the life of me get the plug out on this side to be able to unscrew the selector to try and fix these issues so I'm going to have to like 3D print something and then try and wedge it under the selector while it's still there but other than that I'm still very happy with it and bearing in mind for how it is set up now I've still spent less on this than I would have had to have spent to buy a new LCT. Admittedly the LCT will be slightly better build quality but still I'm, I'm not unimpressed with it. I'm actually fairly happy with it. It's a fairly unique looking gun. Sure it's a bit on the heavy side but it's not ridiculously heavy. I managed to skirmish with it for all morning. Um, I probably could have skirmished the entire day and in fact I did when I played with it at Tuddenham. I skirmished it for the entire day uh, mid cap syndrome and all and, and still had a pretty good time with it. So yeah that is my UK SF G3 build. What do you think about it? Do any of you have a, a G3 build or a UK SF inspired gun? If so, let me know what you've got or what you would like to own uh, in the comments below. And uh, I will say thank you all for watching. Thank you all for sticking around through me rambling. And I'll see you all soon in another video. How are you doing?